All right, trying to put the other one together. So I get this side to do. So we got to try to get the spring right here mounted up on there, which is not that easy. He didn't want to come off. So if he didn't want to come off. It's probably not going to want to go on either. I bet. So same deal. You got a big gap between the two bushes up in there. Try to pack it full of crap. This one once again has no lubrication provisions. It's almost like they want this stuff to wear out. Okay, a little bit there on the top. It's got a big load I put in the bottom yet. There's a big wad up there, huh? That'll pack that center groove up solid. Nice chrome plated bearing surface here. Very important that you chrome plate everything when you chrome it. Can't be half ass and not chrome everything. Some of the grease in there, but a lot of it comes off. Knew that was going to happen. She lubricate this side over here also. This is the rubbing block over here, so get it lubed. Okay. on backwards. Goes like that. So now I gotta try to get the spring to go on there. All I got to do is use my screwdrivers because I got nothing else to use. So I got to try to figure out how they did it. So it looks like it was pre bent at this angle, which looks like how it would fit on here. Like that. So I got to stretch it pretty far. So, take my small screwdriver, try to go like this with it. Pushing down on the part I'm trying to pull against.
Nope. Just try a different one this time. We put on the coil. And just push on the upper coil. I'm just going like that on the coil and shoving on that way. Let's try it that direction. If one method doesn't work, try a different one. There we go. That was the method that works pretty easily. I pivot right off the lever here so you got good leverage. So you go like this, get really good leverage. Okay, there you go. That worked a lot better than the first method. Alright, so. Well, we got a big leak over here. Not sure. Got a little liquid over here on the ground that wasn't there earlier. Where that's coming from. That was all cleaned up. This film is dry. There's no way it could have slipped off of that. I so could probably tighten these up right now. I got access to it. Shouldn't have been any residue. There might have been some residue on the uh, line because that was right behind the master cylinder. I'm assuming that's what happened. All right. Now's the time to tighten these up even tighter than I had them before. Impossible. That moved a little bit, not much. And that didn't really move. Good to be tight. Okay, that's going to have to go up under there. This is a grade butter bolt. Don't use it. Garbage. It's okay for mock-up, but don't use it. So we're going to replace this with a better bolt. Rarely ever use hardware that comes in kits. So. We got three hashes, so that should be grade five. We have no hashes, that's grade butter. So that'd be a grade two. So that's the difference. Garbage, good. We got to torque the piss out of this one. Can't get out of the other one. Do mean I do need my zip gun though to do that. Zip gun. Helps to have a zip gun. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put this side together over here. That's how much thread engagement we're going to have. Make sure there's enough room to do that. Get our Loctite out. Actually goes on the top one, not the bottom one. Okay, that's fine. It's coming up 
and below, as I recall. Bolts our other one. There's our wrenches out right over here. Tight and it still works. It's a good sign. Okay, where's our two molts for our master? Those are right here. Okay, so these, once again, grade butter, fine thread. Now, all these do is hold the master cylinder on, so they could probably be okay because these are. We're going to double nut it from the other side, so these are going to be adequate strength for what we're doing. There's not a lot of load on a master cylinder holding on. If you break a bolt with a master cylinder, there's something wrong. Because that means you had to bottom it out. I'm not talking mass on mass of pressure to work a master cylinder. So we can get away with using crappy bolts. how this does not line up very well. Now you can jam that up there like that and make it work, but you see your push rod angle is pushing right through the side of that body. That is not how it's supposed to be. So that means your master cylinder does not match your bracket. Now in this one here we have two holes. So what we do is take it out of that hole, drop it down to the second hole. So you have double holes over here, right there. I'm not sure if you're seeing that in the video or not. So now, when you do it that way, see how this lines up with that hole and it's pushing straight like it's supposed to. If you push a piston at an angle, either this way, this way, or sideways, that way, and you can figure out this direction also has the same problem. That will bind up your piston in there a little bit, definitely make it wear, and probably make it leak early. All of those are not good. So line everything up so it's straight, you're going to be a lot more happier. Okay, I need a half inch. Half inch. cylinder if you crunch it too much a piston will stick and you have more problems so tension up but not a lot now this one have lock nuts because the bolts stick through so put jam nuts on the other side and nothing will ever unscrew okay so when you use a jam bolt you gotta fold it tight with one Tighten with the other. That's tight. One goes down, one goes forward. Okay, 
this in there. So the jam nuts are back here. So the bolt's tight, like a regular bolt, and then on the back side, jams the bracket and the bolt together. So those two have a fixed load on them, they're locked up here. That's secondary from over here. You can have this bolt hanging out with clearance out here and be tight. Because you got the jam nut tightening it over there. So we got two torques. We got torque this way and then we got torque right here. So that doubles it in. Okay, so that goes there. See, we know piston right here, so it doesn't work right now. Okay, we need to get this brake spun around. So it's out of the way. Where's my foot peg at? Shift peg. So this is our peg for here. That's the one that goes right there. And you can see how the bracket makes it look like it's dirty. So it helped dull it off a little bit. We still got all this crumb out here, which is still pretty bright, but. Oh well, couldn't dull at all. I tried. Again, the foot pegs are just mocked up for now because we have to adjust them again later. Now the shift peg here, I put a couple big washers back here to show it out further. And I got the jam nut over here to tighten it up really tight. I have to worry about it falling off. So we thread it in here. Torque it with this one here. That's tight. And you put the jam nut on here over here. And you tighten that on also. Okay. So we'll leverage on this one. So I pull that a little tight and I pull at the same time. Now it's really tight. So that's never going to come out of there. Okay, brakes a little soft for some reason. Okay, I'm go over here on the other side. Get that out of the way. Okay, we gotta work on our caliper here a little bit. Just out of the way. Get our other foot peg. This back on over here real quick. Once again, it's just a mock-up over here still. Gonna adjust some things yet. This is really loose over here on the on the peg. So these are the correct little washers that go in there, a little wave washer. So they they'll put tension here so this won't rattle like that. And when you put it up, it'll stay up. Hopefully. My guess is there's so much clearance in here. It might not work, but hopefully it does. Okay, so we'll be back on that later. So now we can get our brake set up to see if it works. Okay, we still have the two washers in here on our foot peg. On our foot peg, on our caliper. You see the two washers right there still. So that means I can actually check the brake over here while it's in the air right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the rear brake. Make sure it works. That works not too good. It's in gear. That means it doesn't roll with the squat. So that means I've got to come over here. Put it in neutral by using our shift lever here. Now the rear brake should move. Paddle still with another bolt. Ooh, it's dangerous. It's got heat coil tangling over here. Those are dangerous. Okay. 
Hey, the brake works now. Okay, let's see if the rear wheel works. Appears to be working. We appear to be losing the bike over the side here also. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Looks like we have a little bit of a leak right here for whatever reason. So let's see if there's a fitting. Might be loose, I don't know. Let's find out. Nope, that's tight. tight. So it must be when it squeegeed out this way, it must have made a mess on the table. Just wipe up all your liquids so you know if it's got new ones. Okay, so now the bike is trying to fall off the table, so we need to readjust things here. Get things situated where they're being correctly done. So right now the whole bike's falling off pretty badly. So I'm going to go ahead and jack this thing up right here. Okay. Bike's trying to fall over again. Let's get the camera out of the way so I can get working over here. Watch the bike fall off. Okay, we gotta drive this thing back up on the table. Something just fell off the back over there. Oh, nothing important. Okay, get down there like that. Slide it over there like that. side of the bike. Action wrap. We back. 